Good afternoon, everyone. So today we are going to start another uh, continuous uh, random variable distribution, which is gamma distribution. Gamma distribution. First, we will define it and then I will show you what are the PDF uh, and the other properties of this distribution. It is used to model continuous variables that are always positive. It is used to predict the wait time until future events occur. Okay, for those of you who are joining us now, we just started with the gamma distribution, which is the continuous random variable distribution. It is used to model continuous variables that are always positive. It is used to predict the wait time until future events occur. Now, gamma distribution is defined for alpha and beta. These are the two parameters. I will come back to them shortly. On the PDF of uh, gamma distribution, f of x of x is equals to, this is my beta, beta power alpha, and then I have the gamma function that we discussed in the last lecture. Gamma function of alpha times x power alpha minus 1 times exponential power minus beta of x. This alpha is basically a shape parameter shape parameter this is the number of events number of events For which you are waiting to occur. So, this is my definition of the alpha, which is the shape parameter. 
Yes, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now beta, which is the second parameter, beta was the second parameter here. This is called as the rate parameter. Rate parameter. How do we define this uh, rate parameter? This is the rate. of events happening which follow poison Process. This process we have discussed in much detail earlier. So beta is the rate parameter. This is the rate of the events happening which follow Poison process. Now let me write down the PDF again because I need to derive some equations from it. F of x is equals to beta power alpha. Then we have our gamma function of alpha times uh, x power alpha minus 1 times exponential of minus beta of x. Now this is the PDF uh, for our gamma distribution which I wrote down on the previous slide. Now it is defined as I said, it is always for the positive number. So the x value will be always greater than or equal to zero, or it will be less than or equals to infinity. And of course, your alpha and beta, both values, should always be greater than zero. They should be positive number. Now, if in this uh, PDF I put alpha equals to 1 then let's see what we get here so this f of x is equals to now the beta power alpha alpha is 1 here so it will be beta only power 1 over the gamma function of 1 into x power 1 minus 1 times e power minus beta of x. Now this is beta over. Now this gamma function of 1 means it's a 0 factorial, which is always 1. So let me do it here. Gamma function of 1 it will be 1 minus 1 factorial which will give you 0 factorial and 0 factorial is 1. So this term here will become 1 times x power 0 again 1 minus 1 0 this will become 1 here and times e power minus beta of x. So at the value of alpha 1 I can say that my PDF is beta times exponential power minus beta of x. Now this thing, if you recall, this is what we studied in exponential distribution. Exponential distribution so this is the PDF of the exponential distribution that we have tried earlier
Now, if you recall that uh, exponential dis distribution PDF, folks, I will go on the next slide, please. So the exponential uh, distribution PDF was uh, f of x of x marks equals to lambda e power minus lambda of x. This was for exponential distribution. Whereas we have for the gamma we have, which we just proved with the value of alpha is equal to one, f of x is equal to x, which is equals to beta e power minus beta of x. That's what we have in the gamma distribution. Gamma distribution when we have alpha value equals to one. Now with this information, I can develop my graphs for PDFs. So this is my x and this is my f of x. Now because I know that with the alpha is equal to 1, I get uh, something e power minus beta x. So this term will be something like this. This will be the graphical trend when you have alpha is equals to 1. Okay, I need to go on the next slide, please. Now, if I take uh, If I take alpha is equals to 2, the simplification gives me something like this. The PDF of gamma will turn out to be beta square times x power 1 e power minus beta of x. Now, this is the constant term here, beta. It will be a constant number. So, we are concerned with these two functions, x power 1 and e power minus beta x. Now this is an increasing function because it has a power of one. Whereas this function is a decreasing function. Now, if I want to draw this on the same graph, I'm going back on my previous slide, please. So this was the trend for your alpha equal to one. Now for alpha is equal to two, it will be something like this. It will increase because of the x, then it will start to decrease because of the negative of the exponential. That's what is on alpha is equals to 2. Well, it should go down up to this point actually. Let me correct this. So this is my alpha is equals to 2. And this one was at my alpha is equal to 1. Oops, I will go on the next slide, please. Now, if I take uh, alpha is equals to 3, I get my PDF as beta power cube times x square times e power minus beta x. Now again, this term is a constant here. Now, if you notice uh, 
as compared to alpha is equal to 2. In alpha is equal to 3, I have one more power of the x. So this means it is increasing much faster. It is increasing faster. However, at the same time, my this function, which is e power minus beta x, it brings it down. It is the decreasing function again. Folks, I need to go on the previous slide now, please. So as we said, it will increase faster. So that means I can say this will be the term for your alpha is equal to 3 and then it start to decrease. It will come something like this. So that is where we have alpha is equals to 3. Folks, I will go on the next slide. Now, these points were true when we are changing alpha. Let's see what happens when we change the rate parameter, which is the beta. Now, if I increase my beta, what I get here f of x is the beta power alpha e power minus beta of x. Now this indicates the height basically. And again this parameter indicates a decrease. Now let's go back to the graph, please. And I will change the color here. So we have beta power alpha, which is uh, the height here. So it will be a taller when we change our beta. And then there is a sudden decrease here. And then it comes back to our x here. So this is when we have beta is equal to 2 and alpha is equal to 3. As you can see here, we have this distribution is taller, but it is also sharper. As you can see, this has been reduced as compared to the rest of them. And it decreases after it uh, reaches a maximum point because of the exponential power minus beta of x. This term here. Now, this is the exponential equation. Let's say I give it a number one. And this is the, okay, let's, let's give it a number one. It's the same thing, beta. And this is the number two. Now, what I'm going to do in the next one, in the next slide, I will compare both exponential and gamma distribution and I will try to find out what are the mean and the standard deviation of this distribution. If I compare 1 and 2, you can see that this lambda is equals to my beta here. So I'm comparing one and two. 
what I get here my beta is equals to the lambda now, if you recall uh, the mu in the exponential distribution so we are comparing them here so in terms of the gamma distribution the your mu will be 1 over beta and this is coming from that mu is equals to 1 over lambda in the exponential that's what we use in the exponential i will go on the next slide please in terms of uh, standard deviation the standard deviation turns out to be 1 over beta square in terms of gamma distribution as in the exponential we had sigma square was 1 over lambda square the skewness value if you remember in your exponential this was 2 and the same is true for gamma distribution the ku value was 6 and the same is true for gamma distribution keep in mind these uh, are good when you have alpha is equals to 1 however if your alpha is not equal to 1 then your mean value in gamma distribution will be alpha over beta and your sigma scale value variance will be alpha over beta scale in the gamma distribution it predicts wait time until the kth event occurs. It predicts the wait time until the kth event occurs. Now, by that it means to say, let's say the fifth event or fifth and half event. That's what the k indicates here. However, in case of the exponential distribution, it predicts. wait time until the very first event occurs So what is the difference between both of them? This is applicable when the very first event occurs and this is the wait time until the kth event occurs. Folks, I will go on the next slide, please. Now, just like we have uh, this definition here, through comparing with the exponential, there is a proof of the mean of the gamma distribution. That's what I will do in the next slide. What we are doing here, we are doing, uh, we are finding the mean of the gamma distribution. This is another way to find it. This is the PDF of the gamma distribution as we discuss. It is beta power alpha, gamma function of alpha times x power alpha minus 1 
times e power minus beta of x. Now this is applicable when you have x is greater than or equals to zero, of course. Now in order to find the mean or the expected value, you know the formula that e of x will be equals to v integrated in the continuous PDF from zero to infinity x times your PDF. Now this is my PDF. So this equation will come here. Beta power alpha over gamma function of alpha times x power alpha minus one times e power minus beta of x. And because we have the integral here, we need to have a d of x here. If you notice here, this term, beta power alpha over gamma function of alpha, this is the constant. So I can bring it outside the integral. So it will be beta power alpha over gamma function of alpha. And we take integral from zero to infinity. And I have two terms here. One is x power one, and other is x power alpha minus one. When I combine them, they become x power alpha. Let me do it here. So this is x times x power alpha minus one. So this will be x, this is power one here. So this will be added up. Minus one plus one cancels. So the leftover is x power alpha. Times this is my function e power minus beta of x into d of x. Now, in order to solve this integral, we have two ways. The first, I can use the integration by parts. The second is I can use the multiplication and the division. So I'm going with the second method because the integration by parts will be very complex for this function. So what I'm going to do here, I have the beta power alpha over gamma function of alpha. Now I'm going to leave a little bit space here because I need to write down a vector here and zero to infinity. I'm going to multiply it with the beta power alpha plus one and I'm going to divide it with the gamma function of alpha plus one times all this term here x power alpha times e power minus beta of x into d of x. Now, because I have introduced two factors, in order to keep the equality of the equation, I need to also multiply and divide with their reciprocals. By that, I mean to say this gamma function will come on the top. Sorry, this will be alpha plus one. Alpha plus one over the beta of alpha power alpha plus one. Now, if I cancel these uh, terms, it will give me the same equation here. Now, why I am introducing uh, this? That's because the integral over the gamma density is equals to one. By that I mean to say, let me change the color here. By that I mean to say this term, is equals to one by definition. So I can get rid of all of this. So in the next uh, term I have beta, power alpha over gamma function of alpha times 
times gamma function of oh sorry that's a gamma function gamma function of this one alpha plus one over my beta power alpha plus one and times one so by introducing these factors i get rid of the integral here folks i need to go in the next slide please so this is the so far form of the equation that beta power alpha over beta of alpha minus alpha plus one times the gamma function of alpha plus one over gamma function of alpha now the next is the just the simplification here so these are the same beta power alpha divided by beta power alpha plus one so i can combine them and i will get alpha this power will go on the top and will be subtracted alpha minus one and minus one times the gamma function of alpha plus one over the gamma function of alpha now here the beta uh, sorry alpha and alpha are cancelled out and i'm left with the beta power minus one which will become one over beta now this term if you recall with the definition of the gamma function gamma function of n is equals to n minus one factorial this is what i'm going to apply here now, in case of uh, alpha plus one, this will be gamma function of uh, alpha plus one. So it will be alpha plus one minus one factorial. And I can say that this is the alpha factorial. So this term here will become my alpha factorial now in the bottom here similar to this one the gamma function of alpha will be alpha minus 1 factorial and this is what i can write it down here so it will be alpha minus 1 factorial Now for the factorial definition, we know that this will be alpha times uh, alpha minus one into alpha minus two and up to so on. And here in the bottom, we have alpha minus one, factorial definition again, times alpha minus two and up to so on why i'm doing this because i can cancel out these two terms in the numerator and denominator so i'm left with the alpha here only alpha over the beta and that's what is your expected value or the mean value And the same thing we prove when we compare the exponential distribution with the gamma distribution. Oops, I need to go to the next slide, please. Now, when we talk about uh, the CDF, CDF of gamma distribution, the CDF of gamma 
distribution is analytically intractable okay the cdf of the gamma distribution is analytically intractable therefore we use some software programs we use software tools or programs if you are using microsoft excel this is the formula that you can use g a m m a dot t i s t of x comma alpha comma beta and it will be true or false the true is used uh, when you want to have the cdf and the false is used when you want to have the pdf now just for your information it is not the part of your curriculum the CDF uh, is basically f of x is the we integrate from 0 to x of uh, f of x so alpha into beta of x over the gamma function of a. Now this is the formula for the CDF. That's not the part of your curriculum, but I just want to, to write it down for you. Now this thing is called as the incomplete, incomplete gamma function. When you are studying advanced uh, statistics courses, you work on this one, but that's not uh, a part of your curriculum for now. But it is important that some you should have some information why this is intractable. Again, we have if we go in the further details, uh, we have two kinds uh, in the incomplete gamma distribution. One is the lower, other is the upper. Even your textbook. Uh, does not mention about the CDF of this camera distribution if you will look on to that. Folks, I need to go on the next slide, please. Now I'm going to write down uh, some rules that can help you. Poison distribution. is used to model the number of events in the future. in the future
exponential distribution as I discussed earlier as well exponential distribution is used to predict the wait time until the very first event gamma distribution gamma distribution is used to predict the weight time until the kth event by that i mean to say let's say until fourth event or sixth event the six and a half event so gamma distribution is used to predict the wait time until the kth event now you need to pay attention here this kth event for gamma distribution is always a non integer that mean it will have the positive real numbers so the gamma distribution in the gamma distribution the kth event will always be non integer if your k is positive integer only positive integer only by that it means to say there are there are not uh, fractional numbers the same distribution the gamma distribution is converted to another distribution which is called as the unlang distribution okay i will repeat it again in the gamma distribution if your kth event is a non integer this is what is the gamma distribution however if your kth event is an integer only this distribution is converted into the unlang distribution the rest there is no difference uh, between the mean value or the standard deviation or the variance between these two distribution gamma distribution and unlang distribution Okay, just keep it in mind. Depends on the kth event. Now we will do one numerical here. I need to go in the next slide, please. So let's do one example here. the time between process problems
in a manufacturing line is exponentially distributed with a mean of thirty days. Now the first objective is what is the expected time until the fourth problem. Okay, this is our first objective here. The second is what is the probability that the time until the fourth problem exceeds hundred and twenty days. So our example is the time between process problems in a manufacturing line is exponentially distributed with a mean of 30 days. The first objective is what is the expected time until the fourth problem. The second objective is what is the probability that the time until the fourth problem exceeds 120 days. Now what is the solution here? Now this random variable, let's say x, is the time until the fourth problem. And the units are in days. Now if you look here, this fourth is the integer. So I'm going to use the Erlang distribution. Erlang distribution. So my alpha here is four, which is the number of the events. And my mu value given is the 30. Folks, I need to go on the next slide, please. Now, I know that for the part one, I know the mu is one over beta. Or I can say that uh, my beta is equals to one over mu. The mu value is 30, so beta will be 1 over 30 problems per day.
Now, when I found, want to find out uh, for a link distribution, I know that the alpha is equal, uh, mu is equals to alpha over the beta. My alpha value is 4 and my beta value is 1 over 30. So once you solve it, you will get 120 days. Now in the part B, he was asking what is the probability that the time until the fourth problem exceeds 120 days. So this is related to the Poisson distribution. As I mentioned in the previous slide, Poisson distribution is used to model the number of the events in the future. So in part B, let's say my x is equals to the number of problems, problems in 120 days. Then x is the poison random variable. Now if you recall uh, the formula for the poison random variable, this was the e power minus lambda times lambda power x over x factorial and we find out our x starting from 0 until our n here. And here in the lambda in the poison is my 4 and now I just apply this formula. So the probability of x being less than 4 will be equals to now my n value here should be equals to 3 because I'm concerned with finding out x less than 4. So in the first term here my e power will be minus lambda which is minus 4 times the 4 lambda is 4 power x I'm starting with x is equal to 0 over 0 factorial this is the first term the second term will be at x is equal to 1 so this will be e power minus lambda it remains the same whereas lambda power x is 1 now lambda power 1 over 1 factorial plus we will find out at x is equal to 2 now e power minus lambda times oh sorry this one should be 4 actually it is the lambda lambda value is 4 we know that 4 power 1 e power minus x and 4 square over x is 2 so this is my 2 factorial plus the e power minus 4 times 4 power 3 over 3 factorial once you solve this you will get the answer of 0 0.4335 your probability value will be 0.4335 and that's your answer Folks, I need to go on the next slide, please. Now, in your textbook, Douglas and George, which is available on D2L, on page 129, try to attempt uh, examples 20. 3 
and 24 and on page uh, 132 try to attempt the problems from 98 to 103 these are only five problems that you can try okay folks i will stop it here and if you have any question i will be more than happy to take those Is there any question for me, folks? Now, before you leave, I just want to discuss something which was asked to me on email, and I thought I can have it shared with every one of you. Folks, I will go on the next slide, please. Okay, Usman is asking, could you please uh, a bit early? Could you please explain a bit uh, Erlang distribution again? Now, in the Erlang distribution, as I mentioned, let me go to slides. The only difference is you need to look on the kth value. Just like in our problems here. Now my system is stuck. Okay, it's good. Now, if you see here, this is my a link distribution because my n is here as the fourth problem let's suppose this is not the question if he says you to find out at the two and half problems here okay this is no more in teacher so in that case you will use your gamma distribution the formula of the mean standard deviation variances remain the same there is no difference between them it's only how do you define your kth variable or the value that's what is the Erlang distribution is that clear Usman folks I need to uh, mention something uh, which was asked me on email so I thought this can be helpful for every one of you just give me now my system is again hang up just bear with me Okay, it's good. Now, if you remember from our last lecture, we were doing a variable distribution. Variable distribution. Now, we were solving one example in our class, and in the part two, of that uh, example we had something like this x was greater than 6000 1 minus f of f at 6000 now this we expanded and we find out 1 minus uh, 1 minus exponential of this is the example we did last time actually minus uh, 6000 over 5000 power 1 by 2 and this one was cancelled out with this one and we had the exponential of all of this term And you get the answer of uh, 0 0.334. Now, if you are trying it in the Excel, we mentioned this. Uh, 
it will be the formula will be variable dot uh, dist of x alpha beta and the true for the CDF. Now, what was the question here basically? The student was trying to use this formula, but he did not get this answer. Now, you need to be careful when you are using the formula here because we are eliminating one and one here. Your computer will never know that on the paper you have already, already deleted your one uh, plus one and the minus one. The computer will provide you the answer for this not this part only just keep this in mind the formula is true for f at 6000 again your computer does not know that you have cancelled out one with the minus one because it is calculating this thing is what the computer gives so if you are using the computer you need to subtract one out of your answer if you use this uh, in the excel your answer will be 0 0.6656 which is not the right answer of course now you need to subtract one out of this then you get the correct answer okay just keep it in mind this formula is good when you are calculating all of this however your computer will not know that you have already cancelled one out of one because this one is the part of your formula so the computer is going to calculate whole of this function not uh, this part only i hope this is clear to every one of you now folks we will uh, okay i need to go to the next slide now Now there will be no class on coming Tuesday, okay? Because that's your semester break. And you don't have any midterm exam, so you can enjoy your semester break. There will be no class on Tuesday, but we will meet on next Thursday. I believe it is uh, October 15, if I'm not wrong. Let me check this. I think it is October 15. Yes. So our next class will be on Thursday, October 15. Now I will try to cancel this event uh, in the Webex, but the Webex is still going under under experimental run actually by the CITL. So in case I'm not able to cancel out, just keep in mind there will be no class on Tuesday. On Monday evening, I will also send you a reminder for this. Folks, is there any more question for me for today? Okay, folks, if you don't have any further question, I will just uh, let you go. And I hope you enjoy your weekend and uh, your midterm break. And you have the good celebration of the Thanksgiving Day as well. Just go through this lecture and the problems. In case you get any issue, just drop an email. I will be more than happy to help you out. Thank you, folks, and uh, have a good weekend.